The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. G's Cooking Experience. Hello everybody and welcome to Mama G's Cooking Experience where today we are going to be having tasting the flavors of Sudbury. I would like to take this moment to thank East Lincoln Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for sponsoring today's episode. So let's just jump right in. What we're going to start off is one of the biggest flavors that Sudbury has to offer and that everybody knows about is porchetta. Before I even came to Sudbury, I never even knew what porchetta was. Honestly, I had no clue. To me, it was a lunch meat. So let's get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to take yourself a nice big chunk of pork. Could be shoulder, could be rump, could be, could be leg, could be... I try to stay away from the belly parts as there's not enough meat. And when you go to slice it, it's just going to be fatty. It's going to be flavorful, but it's just going to be a little bit too fatty. The other thing that you want to do is try not to grab something that has too big of a bone in it because it takes too long for the bone to heat up and the flavors to disperse. So this one's perfect. It's got a nice little bone in it. It's got a nice fat cap on it. And we've kept the skin. The skin to me is important because it has all of that beautiful collagen inside there. It's good for your skin, good for your bones. So try to keep all of that stuff together. So I'm just going to put the pork over here and we're going to do our mix first. If you have a, uh, what's this called, a mortar and pestle, I suggest that you use it. If not, you can just mix your, your uh, seasonings in a bowl or in a blender or in a coffee grinder, whatever works for you. So one of the reasons why porchetta is so important to Sudbury is that um, the people here, the farmers like outside Verner and out in Whitefish and Naughton and all of that, they all, they all have, they all grow pork. It grows beautifully here. It raises beautifully here. It's a, you know, it's a staple. It's a real Canadian staple, the pork. So in here, what I've started off with is we've got some pepper. We've got some coarse salt. I put in a bit of smoked paprika. Now smoked paprika is not a Sudbury flavor, but it's a Mama G flavor. I think it's important and it should be in everything. So I have salt, pepper, paprika. I'm gonna put in some uh, celery, so some celery seeds. And then I'm gonna put in some parsley. When it's all done, so pick the flavors that you like. When it's all said and done, you're gonna need at least half a cup's worth of, of seasoned mix so that you're, um, so that you give yourself a nice full flavored rub in here. Now, one of Sudbury's own super awesome flavors that they like to put in all of this stuff is dill. I personally am not a big fan of dill, so I don't put it in my porchettas. But what I do put in my porchettas is fennel. Fennel is delicious and sweet and earthy and fresh tasting and you always kind of question what you got. And I always put a little bit of pepper flakes in there because who doesn't like a little bit of spice? So you put in all of your stuff, take your pestle and grind it up so it looks mm, kind of like, ooh, kind of like Mrs. Dash where it's all mixed together and not too big of a chunk and not too small of a grind. Got a nice, nice, consistency okay oh my goodness if you could smell this next generation I hope you invent smell a vision because this stuff is delicious so I'm gonna take my porchetta here I'm gonna turn on my frying so my beautiful frying electric frying pan I got it to 400 Everybody should own one of these. You got a yard sale, go to the yard sale, spend the five bucks and buy one of these. You're not gonna regret it. So, take our meat. You want it to be, there's a few ways to do this, okay? 
The first way is just take all your stuff and slop it all on and throw it in the oven and no one's going to judge you, it's going to be just as good. But if you take the time and we're going to cut through it and get the flavor on the inside of the meat so that when you go to slice through it, all you have is that beautiful herbed flavor all the way through. It'll melt in there. When you go to make your sandwiches, you'll have all that flavor. You're not gonna need all that extra salt and mayonnaise or mustard or whatever you put on your sandwiches. So look, I, I grind it down to the bone. I went around the bone, okay? There we go. Here, I'll do it on this side too. Pro tip, everybody. When using a cutting board, put a wet cloth underneath. But why, Gate? Because when you're cutting, it gives you a more secure uh, table setting versus trying to, you know, that goes everywhere. Just don't do it. So I got it open. I'm going to grab some of my beautiful herb mix, give it a nice thick rub on both sides. Don't just do one side and think, oh, it's like a sandwich and it's going to work on the other side because it doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Everybody wants to be rubbed. All right, give it a little rub inside the cracks there. Get inside every kind of little crevice that you can get. Pull the skin away from the meat and just really give it a good rub in there. Okay, look, you're gonna see your hands. You're gonna want all that flavor in there. Every crack, every nook, every cranny. Get in there, now flip it over to the other side. Now I suggest that you don't do any onto the skin. Right, look at that, get right in there, rub it in. Don't be afraid. See, it all gonna work out here. Mm, I'm telling you, it smells so good. So I've got this up to 400 degrees. Now I'm gonna wash my hands. Perfect. We're going to put some pork lard into the, into the frying pan here. I have it up at around 400 degrees. I'm going to put a little bit of fat in there. Perfect. Get that up. All we're going to do is just give it a quick sear on each side. Then I'm going to transfer it to my pan. From my pan, it's going to go into the oven with no lid. So do not tin foil it. Do not put any of that stuff. You want it to have a nice crispy outside and, and a nice moist flavorful inside. So I'm going to get my tongs here. Well let's just mix this around here so it's everywhere. Smell a vision, it smells so good in here. I'm telling you guys. Hopefully you all do this. We sell these beautiful pieces of pork here at Seasons Pharmacy. There we go. Mmm, love that sound, love that sound. Okay, we're gonna let that go for a minute so that it gets nice and and seared so that the juices don't come out. I'm just gonna flip it, and when we come back, we'll start up on our Haskab cake. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done is, uh, whenever I'm doing a roast, I don't like to put the roast right into the oven by itself. I find that if you're gonna use the hydro and you're gonna spend the time, you might as well really finish off the plate. So in my pan here, I've added some onions, some sweet potatoes, and some carrots. The, I prefer sweet potatoes over regular white potatoes because the flavor is better, it holds nicer. Honestly, my kid eats it more than she will a white potato. And the nutrients are, you get more out of it. In my pan here, as you can see, what I did is I got a really nice crust, like hear it? 
know if you can hear it, but it sounds really good. And I'm gonna turn off my pan. I'm gonna transfer my, transfer my roast straight on to my vegetables, okay? You want that flavor to go on to your vegetables. You also want the fat onto your vegetables so that you can cook it, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some water, I'm gonna add it to the pan. This is called deglazing the pan. And what we do is we just take a little whisk, scratch all the stuff on the bottom. This is the good stuff. This is the stuff where if you've been at your grandma's or your aunt's or your mom or your dad's and you've had a gravy and you're like, oh, why is it so good? It's so good because somebody took the time to scrape the pan, you know? And you're like, but Mama G, it's burnt. Isn't it gonna taste like burnt? Okay, well don't take the charcoal stuff, okay? So you're just gonna take this, you're gonna take your jus, you're gonna pour it on top, you're gonna place this in the oven. I say, slow and low is the way to go. So 325, give it a good two, three hours, depends how big, right? But put it all on top. And it also cleans your pan. And then I'm gonna put this in the oven at 325 for two hours. I'm gonna check after two hours to see how it's doing. You want it fully cooked, 165 degrees, and I'm telling you it's gonna be delicious. We'll be back to taste it. As our porchetta is in the oven, let's get a dessert ready for the dinner. So, if you've been to Sudbury, uh, you will know of the Haskat Berry. The Haskat Berry uh, is, again, a thing that I've only learned about here in Sudbury. I never heard about a Haskat Berry before. So, Haskat Berries, you pick when you pick. They're the first berry of the season, is my understanding. They look like a blueberry, but they're elongated a little bit. So what we're gonna do is, so I have my frozen Haskat berries because, well, it's, this is what happens. If you don't catch them fresh, you freeze them and they last forever. So I have uh, about a pound of uh, Haskat berries here and you can tell that they're super liquidy, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the liquid from the berry. I'm just gonna let that go and we're gonna take the sauce from the berries and we're gonna make a glaze for the cake once the cake is nice and cool and we'll want to be able to get in there. Look at that beautiful burgundy color. Oh man, so nice. So we're just gonna do our basic white cake today, okay guys? As we're gonna get that to drain over there, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of stuff here. So. Well, one thing I want to teach you is, if you haven't, don't know this already, if you try to cut uh, your butter, you need a certain portion, all of your butter pounds will show you exactly how much you need to cut out of there. Okay, so the measurement is always on the side of the pound of the butter. Um, so having said that, I only need a, so a pound of butter is two cups. When you cut it up, that's a half a cup and that's a quarter cup. Right, so I just need a quarter cup of this. Just take your basic white cake mix, you know, and then you can add whatever fruit you want to it and it's, it'll be fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix our wet ingredients and then we're gonna mix our dry ingredients and that's, you know, that's basic cake making. We're gonna cream them up together. So I try to uh, make sure that I don't get any shells in my stuff when I'm using eggs. So the best way to do so is to have the two bowl method where you crack your egg, pop it in, put your shells into the other one, and you look around, okay, there's no uh, shell, there's no little red spots, any of that, put it in with your butter. Don't crack all the eggs into one bowl and then try and dump it. You're just asking for a disaster. I got my two eggs in there. Nice and easy. So my wet ingredients are butter, eggs. We're gonna put in some vanilla here, about a teaspoon's worth. We'll get that happening. And then let's get our sugar in here. Now, one of the cool things that you can do with sugar is if you have vanilla bean pods, 
Um, honestly, just drop your vanilla bean pod in there with it, and you'll have a beautiful tasting vanilla sugar. It's delicious. So you get all of those ingredients in there. Take your trusty. My grandma and my aunts used to call this thing a mix master. Uh, I don't know why they called it that. It was probably a brand back in the 70s. And, uh, and the other thing that my grandma, and I'm sure your grandmas uh, used to do it too, is uh, used to call the food processor la moulinex. So we're just gonna mix this together. As I'm making cake, I, I think about one of Mama G's experiences and which was working in Algonquin Park. As you see my beautiful apron here, I've got this cocoa bear on here. Cocoa bear is a foundation from Huntsville, Ontario that honestly, it collects, it collects donations and the money that it goes towards is for kids' mental health and drug addiction. And I think that this, this is such an important subject for everybody. And please go online, check it out, cocobear.com. You're, please check it out and you'll see. So we got this all buttered up. We're gonna add in our dry ingredients. You just look, you just want it to like, be cut up a little bit. It's okay to be chunky a little bit. Chunky is good. We're gonna add our milk. We're gonna add our salt. Just a pinch. Because we used buttered salt, you don't wanna, I mean salted butter. Two and a quarter cup of this beauty. Here we go, same thing. Today we're using Ancient grain spelt flour. It's high in protein. It's high in fiber. It's got a bunch of different nutrients that you can't get from regular wheat flour. This is what you should convert to. If you're gonna eat flour and you're gonna eat cake, might as well make sure that the flour that you're putting into it gives you more than just weight gain because that's all that I can think of when I think about regular wheat flour. You're not getting anything out of it. Okay, we'll give this a little mix. Oh, leavening agent. Half a teaspoon, tablespoon, sorry. Okay, give it a nice mix. Cake mix should always be more, um, Liquidier than, than uh, cupcake mix. Uh, not cupcake, sorry, muffin mix. Okay, give it a quick mix. We're gonna make it into a bunch shape today. It cooks nicer and it's easier to serve. Okay, just get that like that. Make sure that you butter the inside of all of your cake pans. It doesn't matter what shape you use. Just make sure that you butter it. There we go. We got that happening. And now we're gonna add our drained hascaps. Just give it a quick mix. Don't mix it too much at the end because you don't want the dough, the, the batter to pick up a weird color. It's just like blueberries, right? You mix it in too much and what you get is gray batter. Pour it in. You're gonna bake it, so here is Mama G's top secret. Bake the cake for the first 15 minutes at 425. Then you're gonna turn it down to 350 to finish the cake. But why? Because what you wanna do is you wanna melt that butter fast and activate that baking powder so it goes poof, so you get a nice airy cake, and that's what you want. So I'm just gonna pour this in here, I'm gonna put it into the oven, and when we come back, I'll show you how to make the nice glaze to go on top. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the glaze for our cake. I've turned out the cake onto the pan and as you can see, it turned out quite nice. 
So what I have here is about one and a quarter cups of Haskap juice. And you have to remember that Haskap juice is pretty bitter in taste. So what I did is I added two tablespoons of 35% cream and about half a cup of uh, butter. So I'm just gonna whisk it together, mix it together, break it up in not such big lumps, right? It's gonna be kind of a buttercream. Make sure your bowl is big enough so that the butter and the liquid mix together. If your bowl is too small, you're just gonna have stuff everywhere. Okay, as that's mixing, you can start adding some of your icing sugar. Do, 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 do. I have about two, three cups here. I'm just gonna mix, put some in here. But Gates, why aren't you sifting it? Every show I see tells me to sift my stuff. Listen, there's enough butter in here, there's enough liquid in here that it's gonna, it's gonna break up your lumps anyway. So you'll be okay. If you're making fondant, you definitely want to be uh, scraping it off and sifting it in because you don't want any lumps in your fondant. And we're making more of a glaze versus an icing. Let's turn it up a little bit. There we go. It's turning almost raspberry colors, beautiful. Just mix it up until everything is melted into it, all binded into one. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour it over top of our cake here. There we go, it's looking nice. Getting some frothiness. Now remember you don't, you can make this thicker. You can boil it down. So what I did is after I did my mixing, I just transferred my bowl over to a heat source and just to get the butter melted and look at this nice, beautiful velouté. Oh man, it smells so nice. It's nice and nice and thin and all together, scraping my bowl because we don't want to miss any of this stuff. Now, you can put more sugar in here and get it thicker. You can uh, uh, add all of your, um, you can add more butter to this if you want for a creamier, more stuff. But I like mine, I don't want my cake to be so full of, of uh, extras. I just want the Haskap flavor. So I'm just gonna pour this nice and easy. I want it thin so that it gets absorbed into the cake. So that when we eat it, you're like, oh, this is so moist and delicious. <music> to finish off our plates, as we pulled the porchetta out of the oven, I've placed some beautiful roasted vegetables on there. I'm just going to slice up my porchetta. It's coming apart so nice. And you can tell all through there, look at all that beautiful herb in there. So give off some nice slice. And cut off a nice little chunk of the pork fat. The skin is nice and crispy. We're going to put that here on the side of our plate. We're going to put the nice little fat chunk on top of there. And then I'm going to take some jus from the plate, from the pan, drizzle it on top. Because remember, guys, that's where our flavor's at with that one there. So there is the Mama G's porchetta. And then over here, I'm gonna give a nice slice of our super beautiful, moist Haskap cake. Mmm, I'm telling you guys, smell-o-vision. That's what we want here. 
gonna scoop this out. Look at that, how the juice permeated through the cake, nice. We're just gonna add a little bit more jus, some glaze here. And there we go. We've got a little bit of dripping here. And there we go. I'd like to take two minutes to thank East Link Community TV. I'd like to thank Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for today's episode of Sudbury Flavors presented by Mama G's Cooking Experience. Hopefully we see you the next time. Thank you.